begin with the class please be ready for the pledge place your right hand on your heart and repeat i shruti narayan commit to be vigilant and bear in mind at all times the risk to myself and my colleagues from covid 19 i promise to take all necessary precautions that prevent the spread of this deadly virus i promise to follow and encourage others to follow the key covid appropriate behaviors to always wear a mask or face cover especially when in public places to maintain a minimum distance of 6 feet from others to wash my hands frequently and thoroughly with soap and water together we will win this fight against covid 19 we continue with the chapter of insulation a brief recap of what we had studied we had studied about the factors affecting the temperature of a place and we had done only three factors though there are more we had studied about latitude altitude and distance from the sea so for latitude i had told all of you that higher the latitude lower the temperature because of the spherical shape of the earth as we move towards the poles the rays become more and more slanting so the torrid zone has a higher temperature whereas as we move towards the frigid zone the temperature becomes low owing to the slanting rays of the sun The second factor we studied about was altitude. Higher the altitude, lower the temperature. And the third factor was distance from the sea. Places close to the sea have a moderate or maritime type of climate because of the moderating influence of the land and the sea breeze. Whereas places far away from the sea have continental type of climate because they are far away from the moderating influence of the sea. Now today we will be studying about the remaining factors. Okay. So the next factor is the slope of the land. The relief features also have a very important influence on the temperature of a place and the slope of the land also influences the temperature on a great to a great extent so an area with steep slope has more rapid change in temperature than a gentle one and we'll study about this effect in terms of the alignment so mountain ranges which have an east west alignment they play a very important role in influencing the temperature of a place especially in the middle latitude so here in this slide you can see there are two mountain features one in the northern hemisphere one in the southern hemisphere so if you visualize in the northern hemisphere the south facing slope they have more direct rays of the sun so they are a higher temperature whereas the north facing slopes they have a lower temperature because they are sheltered and receive slanting rays in the southern hemisphere the north facing slopes are much more warmer and the south facing slopes are cooler now let me repeat what i said so again we have the mountains which are aligned in east west direction in the northern hemisphere if you see the south facing slopes they receive more direct rays as compared to the north facing slope the north facing slope receive slanting rays they are sheltered so they have lower temperature similarly in the southern hemisphere the north facing slope you can see that they receive more direct rays of the sun so they are warmer as compared to the south facing slope so this is how the slope of the land influences the temperature now children a very interesting phenomena about which we will study is called the inversion of temperature we have studied that normally the temperature decreases with height at a rate of 1 degree centigrade for every 166 meters increase in height however in some areas and during certain times the temperature increases with height in the atmosphere so this phenomena of increase in temperature with the increase in height is called the inversion of temperature This happens in hollows and valleys on clear calm nights when the radiation has caused cooling 
and the cold air starts to sink down. So, what happens is, this condition generally occurs during the winter season over land masses. During the long winter nights, the land masses lose heat by radiation and temperature decreases rapidly. In mountainous regions, the cold air sinks down to the valleys because it is much more denser and because of its greater weight. Wait. So the upper air, upper layer of the air retains its form. Therefore, temperature increases with height. So as you can see in this picture, along the valley slopes, the cold air, because it is much more heavier, it starts to sink down. And the warmer air, it rises up. So that is why what happens is that temperature increases with increase in height. So generally what happens is because temperature inversion is common in the middle latitudes, therefore the fruit growers in these regions prefer the gentle slopes rather than valley bottoms for orchards. So they, they plant the fruit trees on the valley slopes which are comparatively warmer than in the valley bottoms during the winter season. The ocean currents transfer heat from lower latitudes to the higher latitudes. The temperature of the coastal areas is affected by the ocean current that washes it. A cold ocean current has a cooling effect. We have already studied about it. And the warm ocean current on the other hand has a warming effect. Now children, if you remember in the chapter of hydrosphere, we had studied that the wind which blows over the warm ocean current, it also becomes warm. So it has a warming effect on the coastal areas. That is why the Gulf Stream, which is a warm ocean current, it has a warming effect. On the other hand, the cold California current, it lowers the temperature. So, because the wind that blows over the cold ocean current, that also becomes cold and so it lowers the temperature of the coastal areas. So, the effect of ocean currents on rainfall is specially felt in the coastal areas that have onshore winds. Onshore winds are those winds which blow from the sea. When these winds blow over a warm ocean current, they pick up water vapor and bring more rain to the coastal regions. That is why westerlies bring plenty of rain to western Europe throughout the year. Winds that blow over the cold ocean currents pick up very little uh, water vapor and so they cause little or no rainfall. So we have studied all this in the chapter of hydrosphere. The winds also play a very important role in influencing the temperature of a place. Winds that blow from lower latitudes are warm, for example the warm westerlies, and make the place they blow into warmer. On the other hand, on the other hand winds that blow from higher latitudes, example the cold polar winds are cold and make the place they blow into colder. Winds that blow from the sea, that is the onshore winds, bring plenty of rain, especially if they are warm winds. Offshore winds, for those winds that blow from, from the land towards the sea, they hardly bring any rainfall. So children, the winds also play a very important role in influencing the temperature of a place. And you yourself must have seen the local winds, for example, Lu, which blows during uh, the months of uh, May, they greatly increase the temperature of a place. So, Lu, it is an example of a hot, dry wind which blows over parts of UP during the summer season. And exposure to such hot winds may cause sunstroke also. Every year, children, we experience this. Right? So, you must have understood how the winds influence the temperature of a place. Another very important factor that you should know is the clouds. The clouds also play a very important role in influencing the temperature of a place. Now, 
during the daytime the clouds if there it's a cloudy day you must have seen that the, especially during the summer season that if it is a cloudy day that day the temperature is slightly lower we feel some relief so the clouds prevent insulation from reaching the earth's surface now clear skies permit insulation rapidly during the daytime and they allow the rapid escape of terrestrial radiation during the night so that is why in the desert areas we find that the daily range of temperature is very high in the hot deserts because of the lack of cloud cover now children there are two reasons as to why the deserts are cold at night the first reason being the absence of clouds during the daytime because there are no clouds so there is rapid insulation the sand also gets rapidly heated now during the night time because again of because of the lack of cloud cover there is rapid loss of heat by terrestrial radiation so there's a fall in temperature during the night time and another thing is that the sand also loses heat very fast so the two factors the lack of cloud cover and the presence of sand play a very important role in influencing the temperature of the hot deserts that is why uh a daily range of 20 degrees centigrade or more is common in the desert areas